So let me introduce you to Tom, to Tom until we have the sound coming in. Uh, Tom is uh, handling EMEA messaging, uh, enterprise messaging for uh, Meta uh, across different platforms, including WhatsApp and Messenger and Instagram. And uh, he will be helping us today and giving us a brief about uh, the platform. Um, can you check again, Tom, if the sound is up? Hi, good morning. Yes, good. So Great. it's all yours now. <laughs> Uh, yes. That won't, uh, won't Good. Do so well. um, perfect. So I'm hoping, uh, yeah, let's see my slides. So good morning, uh, everybody. It's uh, coming to you from London today, uh, where it's rainy. So I hope you have uh, nice, better, better weather than we do here. But it's a pleasure to be able to present to you. And uh, apologies that I can't be there in person. Um, my name's Tom Baker. So I'm. Um, uh, strategic partner manager out of the business messaging team in Meta, and we focus on WhatsApp. But my job is to look after our uh, business solution providers, of which InfoBit um, is one of our global providers. Today, um, I'm going to really quickly cover um, three main areas. The first is why is WhatsApp so efficient for business? Why is business messaging expertise so important? And how does WhatsApp? build emotional connections with customers. And to help set the scene, WhatsApp has really changed the way that we interact with the world and also our families and, and now also how we uh, interact with businesses. We have more than 2 billion users in the world and it's available in over 180 countries. And this is the stat I really like, is 70% of all WhatsApp users are checking it daily. So this is what makes it such a powerful app for you to now interact as a business uh, with your customers. And it's a real sign now, as we've seen the market expand and more businesses adopt WhatsApp as a channel for communication, that today buyers want more relevant experiences and always on support wherever and wherever they are in the world. And one fact that, uh, is, is normally quite entertaining, is one of our surveys, we looked at um, what people would do uh, rather than stay on hold on a telephone queue in order to get their support. And 44% of people said they'd rather spend 30 minutes cleaning a toilet than wait on hold with customer support. So people are ready for change and, uh, and, and the, the market is telling us this today. And with past digital innovation, there was promise of new uh, technologies and innovation, bringing together different tools and systems for marketing and commerce that would give us an overall picture across multiple touch points. So they would help us understand our customer better. We'd know the customer needs, their behaviors, what emotions they're feeling, and also their levels of satisfaction with the product or the service that they're getting. And this full picture would then give you like a uh, uh, like a harmonious dialogue with customers, which sounds amazing. But when was the last time you went to a website and had a cohesive digital experience across multiple different touch points with that business? So instead of getting a joined up experience, we're getting pulled out of our own routine. So we're trying to be taken into their own assets, like their own website or their own app. And so there's little continuity. So today, if we start a web chat online and inevitably we get distracted, like dinner's ready or you, you, uh, someone's made you a coffee and you go have a quick chat, um, you get distracted from that chat and you have to then remember where you were, go revisit the site, find the product or service, start the whole process again, initiate the chat because there's no continuity uh, from one place to the other. And this creates a lot of friction and a lot of abandonment and a lot of lost value. And 40% of web visitors generally leave without a click. And that's just a benchmark that we have today. So right now, there is a critical time, uh, time in how consumers want to discover and engage and purchase with businesses as well. And conversations help businesses get and stay closer to their customer. So we know uh, from a Gartner statistic that by the end of 2022, which is coming up pretty, pretty fast now, 70% uh, of all customer interactions will involve emerging tools like a chatbot or like instant messaging. 
And it's not just WhatsApp. Meta is home to the three of the largest social apps in the world. And across these, we covered 2.8 billion people who are using the apps every day, which is huge. And customers expect the experience to be a customer-centric one that meets their needs where they are, which is in these apps today. And they offer three different things. So Facebook is a place where we can go. It makes it personal. It's very convenient. Instagram is a place where we go and connect with our brands or the things we love uh, to immerse ourselves in them. And WhatsApp, which now allows people to communicate with their friends and family, but now also businesses as well. And across these apps, we have 140 million businesses that are already taking advantages of having a presence on these. And the reason for that is because it's where your customers already live. You can drive huge amounts of value by meeting the customer where they are. And 68% of users say WhatsApp is the easiest way of contacting a business. And we also have some businesses today that are already hitting 98% read rates when they're reaching out to customers using WhatsApp which is staggering when you think about the read rates that you might get on SMS or emails. And it's not just for customer support or for notifications. This conversational journey works across the entire sales cycle. So from discovery, where we might want to keep buyers and customers informed about our products or our services, to actually making that purchase, and building a shopping experience right within WhatsApp, to then getting support for that product, to creating loyalty programs, and then more importantly, to re-engage that customer. So once you've seen value and you've built a dialogue with your customers, you then have the opportunity to re-engage them. And I wanna uh, take a deeper look into what that might look like um, across sales cycles. So we looked at uh, a survey we did for 8,000 people, and we asked them, why are you contacting businesses via messaging? And this is what we saw. The results, 68% are reaching out for research. There's 81% of people are doing it because they want to find out more about products or services. 78% want to get support, and 74% are taking an action to make a purchase or a reservation or book a service. And this is where you can start to see the entire journey unfold. So it starts with discovery where you might have high level questions around a product or service. So in this case, I'm planning to buy a running jacket. We know they want to buy a running jacket. That's good uh, information about this customer, but we still don't know what brands they like, what color they might be doing, if it's a winter or a summer jacket. Um, and so these are high level broad questions where we can start to narrow down uh, what this customer wants. Once we uh, get a decent idea of what they want, they might have a few more refiner uh, questions that make them feel comfortable enough to make the conversion into an actual sale. So it might be that, like, I just need to find out, I know I want these new Adidas Ultra Boost, but I'm just not sure on my size. Can you help me with a size chart to make sure I've got it right? And these little refinements where you can meet the customer where they are and respond instantly make them feel comfortable enough to make the purchase and increase your conversion rate with customers. So this um, provides uh, more ROI in terms of uh, conversion rate of customers. You might also be able to delight the customer during this dialogue uh, by giving them more frequent updates. And one, um, I was told a couple of weeks ago this story where uh, we have a customer who's updating uh, sorry, have a business who's updating their customers on the delivery status at each each stage of the journey. So they were saying the parcel has been picked, the parcel has been packed, the parcel's gone into the van, the van is leaving the warehouse, the parcel has left the van, the parcel is now. So they 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 were like, surely this is too many notifications to send our customers about their parcel. But what they found is the level of satisfaction went up the more they said around this, uh, more information they shared around the process of their delivery status. So in some cases, uh, too much is, uh, is not a thing when it's about uh, information on their particular order that, that customers care about. 
You also have an opportunity here to get closer to your customer and engage with them. So you might be able to find out that they bought the trainers because they're running a 10K race and like you can help them reach their goal to get there. So in this case, we can do some brand awareness exercises. We might have an influencer who's written a blog about running and you might want to share it to try and increase your uh, uh, engagements with that customer. And then you're also there to get help. So this at this point, we're making it super easy to uh, support the customer. So I've just got these running shoes and I'm not happy with it. Maybe they were actually the wrong color or you want to change the size. And we're making it super easy to engage with the customer um, to resolve those issues. And we're doing this via a bot, right? So we're also cutting our costs because we're not generating uh, a whole load of um, people sitting on hold on the telephone, which, as I alluded to earlier, nobody wants to be doing anymore. And then really importantly, we can then re-engage. So we know this customer bought Ultra Boosts in the 2022 uh version and now we're releasing the 2023 version of the ultra boosts we know that information about the customer and we can meet them where they are and re-engage them guess what the ultra boost 2023s are now available would you like to uh learn more about these and then take them back into the discovery and the buy phase um with your customers so the next um slide is actually a video so i'm hoping this comes through but if it uh sounds terrible uh somebody uh just interrupt and i will uh, i'll skip the slide as well this video um is just to show you um what this re-engagement cycle looks like and how it also can be um embedded into your crm so in this case it's salesforce but it could be anything hubspot um, where you're integrating into your order management platform and your customer relationship management. So I think you got uh, half of the sound through for that, um, but hopefully it makes sense and gives you an idea of what that actually looks like in terms of both a chat with your customers and then how that's tied into your own systems and platforms, uh, whether that be marketing or customer relationship platforms um, on your side. And I wanted to uh, just uh, articulate some of these things sound amazing but how do they work in, in reality and that's where infobip really come in so you can see here like we have our person who we want to interact with um and then we have the whatsapp business api which is what meta and whatsapp are offering but it doesn't actually uh, offer a solution that drives a business outcome. It's just the APIs themselves. So we rely entirely on InfoBip and our solution providers to take that API and build it into uh, platforms that will drive those business outcomes. So whether that's integrating it with your CRM, the knowledge base, your ticketing system, your uh, stock inventory, and more. Like there's really creative things you can do um, with this. Uh, but the, the WhatsApp business platform itself doesn't have a, uh, um, a SaaS solution, and that's where our, our BSPs come in. So I just wanted to um, help show uh, what that looks like. We also um, have incredible stats, which I touched on at the start of this presentation, things like a 98% read rate. And how do we have so much impact? So the next few slides are going to touch on how we manage quality and how we look at uh, making sure that 
the campaigns you're running or the interactions you're having with your customers through WhatsApp are of really high quality and have great impact for you as a business. And there's three main pillars that we look at to uh, ensure these foundations are kind of kept uh, for when you design your uh, experience. One is that the message isn't expected. And this is all about collecting opt-ins from your customer, which means that when someone receives a message from you as a business, it's not a shock. It's not like, how do they get my number? Or like, why are they messaging me? This is completely like irrelevant to what I'm, I care about. Which brings me to my second one, which is relevance. And we work on relevance by making things personalized. So this is how you would tie in your customer databases and the information you already know to make those messages personalized to them based on their recent purchasing experiences, based on their uh, engagement with you, um, with the business, or based on how they uh, entered the chat in the first place. And this is really important, and this is where tying it into your uh, current CRM systems is, is super uh, important. And the last one is timely. So if you're running a seasonal campaign, maybe you're doing uh, Black Friday uh, offers, uh, Ramadan offers, whatever it is, like those should be, obviously be sent at a good time that makes sense for those seasonality peaks. Um, and that also applies to the time of day in which you'd run your campaign. So nobody wants WhatsApps coming through at 2, 3 a.m. at night. Make sure this is coming through at a reasonable time and is uh, timely to the user as well. And I, I touched on how we make it an expected message for the users, and opt-in is a super important part of that. So I won't spend too much time uh, on this slide, but I wanted to show um, some of the ways in which you can, you can manage opt-ins from your user base, which will allow you to then uh, send business-initiated messages. One of those can be SMS. You can also direct from your website to create sign-up forms or even create links so that the user, the user would be initiating the conversation. And if the user is initiating a the conversation, then because they're acting, you no longer require an opt-in. You can also divert from your long uh, hold queues on an IVR response flow. So you can take them out of the queue on, on the phone and then take them into a WhatsApp chat to start automating some of that experience. And if you can't fix it via a bot, then you can hand over to a live agent. Um, and we also have opt-in within the WhatsApp thread itself. So at this point, you might want to define what types of messages you're sending to users and say like, okay, I'm happy to receive uh, offers from you or coupons, but I don't want to do my, um, like the whole weekly newsletter that you're going to send me. This is one example where you can define uh, ways in which you want your customer base to be contacted. And then the last one there, in person, on paper, old school, uh, but you are able to manage this opt-in, how what makes sense for your business. So if that's something you can still do, uh, then that's also fine. Uh, when you get really excited and you want to run a big campaign on WhatsApp, we also have some uh, messaging tiers to work through. And this is so that we can control the sample size. So we monitor quality, and I'll show you what that looks like in the next slide. But starting off with small batches means that we can uh, monitor feedback and make sure the quality is high before you go and scale some of these campaigns. So you can actually run through these tiers until uh, within three days now. But it starts off at 1,000 unique numbers, then 10,000 unique numbers, then 100,000 unique numbers. And then after that, you get unlimited uh, to be able to uh, send out as many messages as you like. Um, but this just helps us uh, prevent uh, widespread um, what might be perceived as like spammy messages to users. And once you launch your campaigns, this is what the quality dashboard will look like. InfoBit will also be able to help you uh, pull out more data insights around the campaigns that you're running. But at a high level, you'll be able to see this in your WhatsApp manager to see what campaigns are, are running well with a high quality rating which means that customers interacting well with your messages, they're not reporting the number or the message or blocking the number. Um, and if you do start to have a low quality rating, this gives you the opportunity to go take a look at that campaign or that template or the interaction, and then make the adjustments to ensure that the quality is kept high.
so given all that there's um a question that most people ask at this point is like that sounds amazing people can have a great experience in whatsapp and i can penetrate more of the market that aren't currently coming to my website or app by using whatsapp but how do i get those in there and there's a number of different entry points um which um you can use in order to increase uh, the number of people that you're interacting with on whatsapp you can use things like QR codes. So a really nice one is if you're having a parcel delivered and you just stick your QR code onto the parcel. So then that person just scans the QR code uh, and they're taken straight into a chat where they can get support for that product. So if they wanted to initiate a return and you wanted to automate that experience, uh, they could just start it right within WhatsApp and then get their problem resolved. You can also use ads that click to WhatsApp. So you can use advertisements on Instagram or Facebook that will create a call to action and they can click on that and have and send a relevant message to you as a business on WhatsApp that's going to open the dialogue and start the conversation. So whether that's uh, like an offer that you find um, or that you want to promote or like a new product or educational piece, then, um, then that can be used. Um, you also have like websites and bots and in-app experiences where you can uh, divert people into WhatsApp. But, when you start to design the flow of um, what you want to achieve on WhatsApp, then you can start to see what entry points make sense. And I don't have time to talk through loads of use cases today, but this uh, slide does give you an overview of all the different things, and this is kind of specific to a retail scenario, but it fits into many uh, industry verticals. All the different areas across the sales cycle. So whether you want to do more discovery-based uh, lead gen activities where you're sharing more information about products or services, there's a whole load of ideas that you could start to look at that make, might make sense for you. Whether you want to build more into your sales process and actually have more people transact within WhatsApp, whether you want to look at reducing your customer care support costs and improving the experience for them, then there's a whole load of things you can do there. And then finally, the loyalty program, where you want to get closer to your customers, learn more about them, be able to drive more upsell. Um, we also have a lot of loyalty programs. So with this slide, I'd say like you're not going to be able to like complete all of these workflows that you might have today and just move them all onto WhatsApp tomorrow and then start running. I'd pick a few of these that might make sense for you as a business, where you're going to see the highest customer value added or the highest return for you as a business, roll them out, see how the customer value is and what type of engagement and levels of engagement you're getting from customers. Hopefully you'll be delighted by it and then you can start picking off others so that you can start to develop that entire um, cycle of what makes sense for you as a business. Um, with that, I will close up because I'm um, over time, but there's a few points uh, just to uh, reiterate. One is this is an opportunity to increase increase engagement across all of your channels. The end point doesn't have to be WhatsApp. If your outcome is to uh, still send them to shop on your website, that's okay. But you're able to create a dialogue, increase value, and increase the conversion rate of people actually shopping on your website. It's evolution, it's not revolution. So like, we don't want you to tear up an app that you've already built or a website that you've invested loads into. It's about penetrating more of the market that currently aren't coming into your own app or your own website. And just the final uh, point here is use InfoBip, start the conversation, have a look at those different use cases you could build uh, and understand the art of the possible. So thank you very much for your time. Pleasure to uh, to be able to speak to you guys today. And um, any questions, I will uh, try and follow up with the InfoBit team as well. Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you very much, Tom. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll, now, I'll now leave you with, with Amsel from InfoBit team.